I've had a frustration with our education system for a long time. Um, I just really didn't know why, and I was always told that this is how education is supposed to be, and that we shouldn't expect anything else. My name is Travis Allen. I am a college student studying business management in Kennesaw State University. I'm representing uh, a unique perspective. I'm re representing students. Good morning! You know, I am so excited to be here with all of you today. How many of you here are excited to get an iPad today? I think the student voice is vital to education. Are you ready? <laughs> the impact that you all have is far greater than you could ever imagine. Now I want to ask you a question. Who here truly believes, truly believes that at this age you can change the world? Who here believes, absolutely believes you can change the world? A couple of you. The greatest insult you can give a student is to tell them that they are the leaders of tomorrow. Because that implies that they can't lead today. They can't make an impact today. And that's not a message that I would want to hear or that I would want to give. When I was 17, I was using mobile technology for my own education in school. I learned well through technology and I was applying myself through technology but I wasn't allowed to. One day I was using it to take notes and the policy was we couldn't use our mobile devices so my teacher took up my device gave it to the principal, the principal called my parents the, my parents had to drive to school to pick up my, my device. I went home that day very frustrated and asked myself why. Why this way and could there be a better alternative? He was born into this digital world and he didn't know any other world. And then when he went to school to learn, the, the best tools that he had uh, were being taken away from him. I was sitting in my office uh, and he, he came in and he said, Dad, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revolutionize education. I'm going to create this device and it's going to have, you know, all the education is going to be everything in one device and we won't... We won't have to have you know books and paper and and no more chalkboards and this big big idea, and I, I remember thinking, my gosh, he's going to try to compete with you know Microsoft and Apple and Google, <laughs> and he's uh, 17 years old, you know. He started to realize that this was not really about the technology, that it was really a problem with awareness. And so I spent the next four months as a 17-year-old high school student creating a YouTube video showing how one-to-one -one mobile learning would be the future of education. My name is Travis Allen. I'm a 17-year-old high school student at Whitewater High in Fayetteville, Georgia. I believe I have a solution to America's education problem and I need your help. My high school is experiencing massive budget cuts Teachers are being let go, and classroom sizes are getting larger. Our public education system is broken, and it needs to be changed. I hope you will take a moment to watch this short PowerPoint presentation I've put together that answers the question, does technology belong in our classroom? You decide. We videotaped that in the office, and we clicked the button to, to upload it to YouTube. And I said, you know, what we just did was we just created the first snowball. We're standing up on this mountain, and we're packing this snowball. I mean, this little tiny snowball, and we're gonna we're gonna push that snowball over the the mountain, and it's it's gonna slowly build, you know. And pretty soon, that snowball is gonna be so big, nothing can stop it. I want to travel to as many cities as possible to share our message. We're students touring the nation to reform education, and we want to show what mobile technology can do in the, effectively in the classroom. So if you go on the bus, it shows some of the technology and how a mobile classroom can function. And when you walk on, you're going to get that complete classroom experience, seeing what is possible and how we can change education for the better. 
Our team members will be traveling all over the U.S. for the six months, stopping at conferences, schools, anywhere where we can set up our bus and show people what's possible through technology in the classroom. Thank you so much for coming today. Mr. Arvin. That's a devil, so. And Thank lastly, you. do we get everybody? Travis. All right. Hey, 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 can we take one of those shots where we're all like walking and you just slow mo? Travis had his own personal struggles in school, but if you could hone in on something that he was passionate about, he would run with it. When I was 14, I played this game, Star Wars Galaxies, online, and it was the first. Uh, business I created. It was a fake virtual business in Star Wars. High School Initiative was not my first one. And in this game, I was one of the wealthiest people on my server, and I had 30 and 40 year olds working for me at the age of 14. Everything I applied in this business, I'm now applying to my real business in real life. Not only that, but it was fun, right? I was learning and I didn't even know I was learning. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Travis Howell. I'm a junior at Kennesaw State University. I started doing local presentations uh, on my campus. I was definitely afraid of public speaking, um, but I started doing these, these local presentations and I, pretty good feedback. Even though I, I felt like I wasn't very good at the time at speaking, the feedback was still very positive and that's kind of when I started thinking, people like to hear from students. So it was then that I formed a team and created the iSchool Initiative. A completely student-led nonprofit focused on reforming education through innovative technology. So the art of the teacher is to awaken the creative joy and expression in the students. If that's the case, then why am I still sleeping in my classrooms? I would think that, you know, if we're supposed to, dang it, I lost the day. Cut four. Arvin was one of the first people to join my team and just has sacrificed everything to be a part of this team and to make change. Oh, you're saying, yeah. Both of my parents were drug addicts, and are drug addicts, and dad's drug of choice, cocaine, mom's drug of choice, depends on the day of the week. I grew up in an abusive household. Uh, my father uh, is technically what you would call a crackhead. He's addicted to crack cocaine and stuff, and uh, was really abusive to my mom, and so uh, growing up, I got into a lot of fights. Uh, Started smoking weed when I was 13. Um, started drinking around 13 too. Joined the gang when I was 14, and uh, got arrested for grand theft auto when I was 16. So, needless to say, education was the last thing on my mind. Homework, going to school, none of that stuff really made sense to me. It was just like living day by day. Yeah. Show him the website. Let him take lead on it if you want. High school initiative was having its ups and downs. We were struggling. We didn't have the revenue we needed. We couldn't afford team members. We couldn't afford salaries. We couldn't afford our groceries. And you know, I came to a point where I needed something to, to really motivate me and inspire me. I have a big interest in education, and I think we all do. Uh, we have a huge vested interest in it, partly because it's education that's meant to take us into this future that we can't grasp. Sir Ken Robinson was one of the first people I found when I started researching this industry as a high school student. I watched his TED talk on schools are killing creativity and it's really what sparked a lot of my interest in saying wow there are people out there making a difference and challenging the way people are thinking about education right now. I understand you found a local teen who found school to be boring, then decided to do something about it, and it involves this gadget. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Actually, an iPhone Excel. That teen is now the CEO of iSchool, the iSchool Initiative, a program that's bringing excitement to schools across the country by getting teachers to allow kids to use cell phones and other technology to help them learn. I did learn that to get people on board and make this successful, it had to be a bottom-up approach, a grassroots movement of students, teachers, and parents coming together. And so I built an initiative focused on doing just that, give a voice to the students.
No Child Left Behind is based on a whole series of false premises, I think. Uh, one of them is that you can improve education by standardizing everything. Uh, and the trouble with this is that kids don't come in standard sizes. Right now, Sir Ken Robinson is doing his uh, signing. His, he's signing books and there's a long line uh, waiting and, and I'm sitting here waiting, sitting on the side, waiting till the line dies down so I can be the first one to go up to him and grab his attention and bring him to the bus. Being someone that we've seen as a role model to us for so long, I'm just hoping that he, he has some time to, to come on and check it out. And I think there's a lot of excitement on my team right now at the possibility of meeting and talking to, to someone like Sir Ken Robinson. You like? We've got all these displays on the side and you can walk through and see that green long classroom experience. But we focus on so anyway, that's, that's what we do as a team. We're going to be going through uh, 25 states or so and presenting to about 40,000 uh, wow. teachers while we're on the road in this bus here. Yeah, dope. Yeah. And how many people can get in the bus at any one time? Uh, I would say 30, uh, yeah. comfortably. Uh, you could probably squeeze in 40 here. We're but obviously very committed, that's all I can say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We it's like the equivalent of someone who wants to be a basketball player to meet like Michael Jordan or something. You know, it's just incredible. There was a lot of things that we've got to fix for tomorrow. Here's what happened a lot. There was no one in here. I was having a conversation with three people, not even presenting, I was just talking to them, and three new people walked in the bus and they did just stood around and just sat there. And Mike looked around and was waiting for someone to talk to him and I had to run outside and say, I need someone to go talk to him. Son, we get swamped. How are we going to get those people It's the exact same thing that you would have yeah, to do it's the exact same this way. way. It's scheduled here. So I guess, wait, can you, I, I want to answer that question. Why, why are you being so hostile? I'm, I'm, try, I'm not trying to be hostile. I'm just really irritated with a lot of stuff. And we'll talk about that later. I apologize all, but everybody's going to be hostile to you. It's my goal. I just want to answer. Federal regulations allow one carry-on bag plus one small personal item. And you get good grades. You go to good college, and you know you get a good job. And it and it's all about perfection. Unfortunately, that's not what it takes to be an entrepreneur. It's not what it takes to be a, a leader in society. The only way to get better is to make some mistakes and learn from those mistakes. So it's like midnight and I have to present tomorrow. So this is probably going to be now. My last presentation uh, was for students and it did not go as good as I thought it would. Um, I was actually really, um, really discouraged. So well, what I think I want to do, I want to, I'm, I'm going to think about it a little bit more, but there's got to be a way to create more engagement and excitement. Yeah, you know, I've had probably one or two that went like what I want them to be, where they're really engaged. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, well, what, what do you think I could, should change? Or... Um, be careful about insulting teachers. They were here just with the language of like, um, you know, they teach you that this is the way it is, but that's not mm -hmm. what we should be doing. Yeah. You know, because you're basically saying your teachers, you know, your teachers have not been teaching you correctly. Mm -hmm. So just be careful with that language because there mm -hmm. are teachers. Yeah, here. I felt that. Um, one thing I, I know is Travis, He'll tell me when my presentation sucked. <laughs> no, every time that I talk to him, every time that he gives me feedback on what I'm doing, uh, it presents a new perspective. It's so funny how things just go out the window when we get on stage. I, know. I can't say I've ever um, felt the amount of challenge, the amount of consistent challenge and encouragement from any any person I've ever had in my life. I had teachers that fought for me. I had administration uh, that began to fight for me. Somehow I ended up graduating with honors. Some, somehow I ended up running track at state. And I'm on track to become the first person in my family to graduate college. Yeah, 
This is our 14 schools we're doing big one-to-one -one kickoffs with where we're giving every student in the school an iPad. We're going through doing workshops for them. They're going through the bus. They're, it's this whole day event we're putting up for the entire school. There you go. Step right up. Anyone at any age can make a difference. And once you start having that mentality and start thinking big, there's no limits to what you can do with your ability. Don't be afraid of failure, work hard at it, and, and go out there and accomplish the impossible. If someone tells you you can't do something, just prove them wrong and do it and do it well. My goal is to get the President of the United States on our bus, to hear our message, to experience what we're about. I don't just think it's going to happen, I know that it will happen. If you want to stand out, if you want to be a leader in this world, have an absolute love and desire to learn because I truly believe if you have this love of learning, you will lead a life of significance. You will be the game changers who use information to your advantage. One person really can make a difference. The last stop on the tour was back to Travis's high school. His vision that he had, that started a, a chain of events that led his 15-year-old brother going in as a freshman to the same high school to be able to bring his technology into the classroom. Today's youth have more power than they realize. If you have passion about something, if you see something out there that you don't like, if you see something that you think needs to be improved, no matter how young you are, no matter where you're starting from, anything is possible.